Welcome, Sunny. Thank you so much for coming. It's been a, I've been trying to get you to a panel for a long while, so I'm really pleased. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about BitPay and what you guys, because I know you've been around for a few years, right? Sure. BitPay is the largest processor of Bitcoin in the world. We've been around actually since 2011, which makes us probably like grandfathers in this industry. <laughs> and uh, we allow companies like Microsoft and Newegg to accept Bitcoin. So like the first data of Bitcoin. And we'll process close to $4 billion this year in Bitcoin payments. Wow. So essentially, Bitcoin is actually working. It's not just being used as a stock speculation vehicle. Yeah. People are actually spending it around the world. And um, um, uh, yourself, I, how long have you been interested in the crypto world? And obviously, there's been massive changes we've seen. Like, just to give you an example, I was going to get you on a panel I think around October right. 2016. Well, we ended up having the panel, 25 people came. We had the same time a Bitcoin panel in October 17 and we were packed out. People were forcing their way in. It was just unbelievable. So this huge change of ordinary people being interested in crypto, um, I've been following it since 2008, but, you know, I like pleased that ordinary people are interested. What do you think? Yeah, no, it's, it's been quite a remarkable run. I mean, I got in about six or seven years ago, too. And it was, you know, we saw price go up to 1200 then crash at 200 and it was stayed flat and low for a couple of years. And it was pretty doom and gloom in the industry. And that's where a lot of companies had to actually solve a real pain point in order to stay in business. Mm -hmm. And really not worry about the price of Bitcoin and really figure out what pain point you're going to solve, what business model do you have, how can you make yourself successful and profitable and then the price took off, and then the whole world came in, and a lot of the companies you're seeing actually built their businesses, though, in the downturn, and that's why they're very successful right now. Right. And so uh, an upturn brings a lot of froth, right, and um, a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon. Um, do you think there's going to be people burnt out of this? Um yeah, I think the people that don't have the proper business models, again, right. similar to the same ones that were five years ago when the price went up the first time, they didn't have proper business models, and when the price crashed, a lot of them went out of business. Right. I think we're going to see the same thing again. So it's very important to make your business um, resistant to the price of Bitcoin. The price is going to go up or down, and it shouldn't have any effect on your business. And so tell me what your opinion is of the ICOs. I know it's going through a bit of a settling stage now. We did have uh, Scott Walker from the yeah. SEC here a, f a few weeks ago, um, and I see that they're issuing subpoenas now. Um, and I read somewhere that there's petitions being put to the Congress um, about... Um, the ICO token and whether it's currency or not. What's your thoughts about where this where this will go? I'm hoping it'll be positive. Um, regulator meets token, right. but <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, you know in fintech compliance is always the biggest issue. Right. And the good thing for the SEC is they're actually not saying it's illegal. They're just going to try to regulate it. Yeah. So it's actually a very positive thing because they could easily shut this down like it's happening in other countries. But all indications are they are going to make this work, but in a regulated way. So I don't think you're going to see like the quick, you know, ICOs happen with people with no business plans. Right. I think you're going to see more like Series C D companies with like 50 employees are going to use security registered tokens in a licensed, regulated way, actually. I think that's what's going to start happening going forward. But everything takes a lot of time, as you see, and the SEC is moving very slowly, but they've actually done a pretty good job of not overreacting, I would say. Um, someone was saying, one of the VCs said that, you know, he doesn't think they want to kill the goose that laid the golden egg. And I think that's the wonderful thing about the American um, entrepreneurial spirit is that uh, where's, where there's business to be made, I don't think there's a damper put on that. But obviously, as you said, there has to be regulations and uh, there's been a lot of scams recently and a lot of people have been burnt. So um, you have to have some, sort of some sort of protection, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's the same thing that happens in stocks. Yeah. Right? That's why they have the SEC originally. So there's scams in stocks and there's scams in everything else. And eventually the industry will mature and settle out and you'll figure out how the right way is to be done. And that's what the SEC is going to mandate now. And everyone's going to be forced to do it in that way. And, you know, BitPay, we just raised a $30 million funding round last month. And Coinbase raised a big round a couple months ago, too, as well. And neither of us did an ICO, though. We did it the proper way, doing VC funding, gave it part of equity. We felt that was just best in the long-term interest of our company. So do you think that the ICOs will replace or at least um, suppress venture capital here in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley? No, I think they'll just kind of complement it in certain ways. So, I, again, I think you're going to see... Instead of a Series C company trying to do an IPO, which is never going to happen for a lot of Series C companies, yeah. they're going to do an ICO instead. 
And that's going to be an easy way for their employees and investors to get liquidity, actually. Right. And for the public to be able to invest in companies like that rather than waiting for an ICO, I, IPO. And um, I would imagine that um, companies uh, are missing out on uh, – what I see with the venture capital community is that there's a great knowledge and experience and um, – uh, that they contribute apart from the money. And uh, uh, someone was saying the other day, well, a lot of VCs are investing in tokens, but they're just throwing their money at it. They're not having to do any work. The company, the startup meet, misses out, don't you think? Yeah, the idea of raising venture money is not for the money, actually. Yeah, it's I for the so. guidance they bring you, the connections, the expertise, yeah. and that's what we're looking for. Yeah. And the VCs right now, they're investing in ICOs. They're more just trying to dabble in it and get their feet wet to learn the business, actually. But again, the key point to raising venture money is for the guidance and expertise they bring you. So you guys totally went rock and so does Coinbase, right? <laughs> That's the best way to go. Best way to go. I wish you all the best Thank and uh, thanks again for coming. Thanks very much. Thanks. Okay.